Surely it won't be that hard, right? R right? Hmm. Pretty good chance at a burning elite snipe, although you really gotta commit. Fighting guardian. That's a good burning snipe. Hmm. Don't like the whole committing to it thing, though. Could lose 7 max, remove 2. I think that can be very strong, actually, as a start. Starting down 2 cards. Certainly is a good head start on removes. Although if we don't go for that Burning Elite, our act looks kind of weak overall. We can do, what, 2 elites, 3 upgrades? I guess that's okay. Starting with a colorless card can be just fine. Was that last deck fast enough and block enough without the Sundial? With the Lizard Tail, yes. Without the Lizard Tail, probably not. Because again, we can go to 200 strength very quickly with the Limit Break by cycling it. Getting the Burning Elite for free here does mean dodging two combats in question mark rooms. That's a bit iffy. Again, the thing I most, the thing I least like here is that if we do get a combat in one of the event rooms, we're still committed then to the Burning Elite first, which is really tough. There's also this option, which is also two events to snipe, but then I don't have to. But also, there's not that much else in the act. Oh, such a tough call. If I knew this was going to work, I would probably click it immediately. Because it's this is just the best path, period. But I do think... I want the remove too. Ironclad remove two strikes. I think so. Griscar, thanks for the 13 months and the tier two sub. Yeah, I'm going to remove two strikes for seven max health. Start down a couple of our basic damage cards. We're going to look to add better damage cards real quick here. Of course, we got Jawworm first, but the turn one draw is fine, so I guess it's fine. Jar and Worm with two strikes removed is a little spooky. But only a bit. I'm going to bash you now. Okay, maybe kill next turn. We're good. We are out of this fight. Nice and comfortable. And I'll happily take a Twin Strike, dealing 5 damage twice. Good with Strength, good upfront damage, nicely replaces the Strikes that we just removed. And then with the Early Shop, we can... Think about what we want here. We could further remove another card. I actually don't hate removing a Defend here and replacing it with Armaments. Or we could go for an Early Shockwave pickup, that's pretty good. We could even do Shockwave plus Armaments, in fact, which is kind of cool. You just duct tape two strikes together. That's true. That is true. Simply get the Minimalist Achievement. Don't think I'm taking a potion here. Does Reboot trigger tough bandages? No, because it's not discarding the cards um, in the traditional sense, even though they... Okay, wait, what does Reboot say? Hold on. Just exclamation point Reboot? There's a card Reboot. Info Reboot, rather.
Yeah, sh they're shuffled into the draw pile, but they're not directly discarded. So Reboot affects the Sundial and the Abacus, but not the Tough Bandages. That is a pretty good Shockwave. I might just buy Shockwave. Buy a Shockwave. Take the Arma, too. Fills up the deck with some cards. We're offered Slime Goop immediately after this. Lose 11 health, gain 75 gold, or simply lose 7 gold here. With no more shops this act, it is, in terms of getting out of the act, better to leave it. But I think we're good on health. Choose to believe we're good on health. Pretty sure we're fine. Take the money. I'm taking the money. Um, <clears throat> Arma Strike plus Strike plus next turn does exactly 26, so we can full block this. 13 twice. We heal 6 off that fight. That's good. We don't get a potion. That's bad. And we're offered Evolve Infernal Blade Wild Strike. I don't think I can fight an Elite right now. I might need to go this way. Take this elite. I would really like a potion for the elite. But yeah, we take Infernal Blade here, because it could bail us out. If we're fighting a boss other than Guardian, I might want to take something else there. The Evolve, perhaps, but against Guardian, we never take Evolve. <clears throat> Didn't mean to do that, actually. I was trying to play Twin Strike Strike there to kill. But I messed it up. Oh, well. New biggie. Root Juice is not the potion I was looking for. Headbutt's okay for damage. Metallicize is okay for block. I'm worried about this elite fight. Take a headbutt. Allowing, a, allowing us to put a card back on top of the draw pile. And if I was going to upgrade a card here, I'm thinking perhaps Twin Strike. Chartered Accountant, uh, how's it going? Long time YouTube watcher, first time Twitch watcher, always glad to hear it. Upgrading Infernal Blade is okay, although... Yeah, even with armaments, I think upgrading Infernal Blade is okay. Might be upgrading armaments in the future. Do I upgrade armaments right away? Maybe that's the best option, actually. We can get multiple upgrades for the price of one. Let's try that. I don't often like the early Arma upgrade, at least until I have some card draw. Oh, gosh. Uh, like at least one time here. All right, we found a paper frog. I am leaving, I'm pretty sure. Although, maybe this is a free fight. And I would like a potion. No, wait. Keep searching. Having the Paper Frog to make this fight easier is really nice. The Shockwave here. Turn one. So I think we clobber this fool, right? Twin Strike does 16. Just go bash Twin Strike. Can I do 44? I guess that's up to Infernal Blade. What do you got? Infernal Blade? 
Carnage. That means we deal 44. So take six, heal six. We get 56 gold. Still no potion. And shrug, seeing red or armaments. So I guess shrug is fine. So that was great. It was basically a free elite fight as our event. Let's fight another elite now. We could get Grumlin Knob again. Given how we just trounced Grumlin Knob, I think we're pretty fine. But yes, the next elite could be Knob again. It's not, though. It's Legavulin. Do we wait for armaments, or do we just play Shockwave to start? Shockwave into attacking is a pretty good open here. I think we just play the Shockwave. Keep the Infernal Blade. Or I could play the Infernal Blade, see what it is. Let's do that. It's a wild strike. Eh. Oh, wait. Upgrade. And then next turn I can play Bash and Headbutt Shockwave. Or Arma. But preferably Shockwave. So we can get the two turns of weak here. Seems perfectly fine. Sixteen or fifteen? Sixteen. Hit it. Hit it hard. And we need to re-up the Vuln. Is this lethal? Twelve plus twelve plus ten is exactly a kill, right? Nice. Whew. We score a Vajra plus one strength. Very good relics to start. Do we take a second headbutt? I say yes. Since we're missing a strike and all that. We have 10 base damage. That's pretty good. Musty Ging, thanks for the prime sub and the seven months of support. Puriapt ain't it, as far as relics go. Take a blue key. Bonk. Like double headbutt with the armaments here. It gets pretty all right. Bonk. Finally a potion, also a corruption. Uh, corruption's pretty all right. The more skills you have, the better corruption is. We've added a shrug, we've added a shockwave, we've added an infernal blade and an armament, so we have lots of added skills. That means this is a lot of energy, and therefore I am super taking a corruption. Wouldn't call corruption good in the guardian fight, our act boss, so we don't plan on playing it there. But otherwise, yeah, this is a great find. But yes, we're not likely to play it against guardian. I wonder if that means I want to take more combats now. We already found arguably the best event in Act 1. Combats will let us look at more card rewards, and we're ideally hoping for more pieces of the so-called Ironclad Exodia. We want to find Feel No Pain and Dark Embrace to go with this corruption. Or just more skills. More Shrugs, Flame Barrier, Impervious. We'd like to find another potion, too. Let's take another combat. Maybe two more combats. First up, five slimes. Come on, immolate. That's not immolate. I repeat, that is not immolate. Nor is that helpful. I guess it's better to bash than it is to strike defend here. Take 12. Not a great start, but uh, what can you do? Ow. Yeah. 
corruption instantly showing off its power there. Another power potion. Drop kick. It's actually not a bad drop kick, especially with Paper Frog. We got a shockwave. I'll grab this. Especially with the corruption, we might end up boiling the deck down to a, an infinite or near infinite combo, and an, a drop kick could help a lot with that. Got two potions. Let's take one event here. Remove, transform, upgrade. I'm going to transform a strike. Could outright remove here if we wanted to, but I'm going to transform a strike. Try to get something that combos with what, we're already, with what we're already doing. Is there any card that I never consider taking under any circumstances? Pretty much no card. Um, some of the closest nominees would be Forethought, Wild Strike... Uh, not too many others, really. Pressure points. Clash. But I've taken those before. Oh, that was much better. We got a whirlwind. Now we're, we're now we're good. Now we're really good. It's a great upgrade too. Is the transform animation random? Yes. Uh, don't be fooled by that animation. Even though it kind of looks like a slot machine, there is no interaction between the timing of your click and what you get from the event. The outcome is seeded based on which card you transform. So it's it's not a real animation, just to be clear. Ow. But my face, though. Guess I'll try to kill the looter first. Don't steal my money. Good power pot. I've got two decent potions. All right, I'll power pot here, actually. Get a little bit more block, I guess. Ouch. Use you. All right, Whirlwind is back. And we do, in fact, get another potion. Rupture, Clash, Warcry. Those are pretty bad. Those are pretty bad. Unacceptable, I say. If only this rupture was a feel no pain or a disarm or carnage or something. Or something. 17, 20, do 20. Got the Grumlin Ob rematch here. I don't foresee too much of a problem. Take Headbutt over Twin Strike and Strike here, as Headbutt plus the Drop Kick would give us a kill. Yeah. So we can Headbutt the Twin Strike, Drop Kick, draw the Twin Strike, and kill. Panagraph, heal 25 of the sort of boss fights. Very good for the upcoming Guardian, and of course the rest of the run. With the Corruption, second Shockwave is not unreasonable here. Don't really want a Reckless Charge or a Cleave. Nielzio, thank you so much for the 20 months. Believing in that 10 streak? Why, thank you. Yeah, with Corruption, I like it quite a bit. And then we don't have to upgrade either Shockwave, right? Um, Could upgrade Corruption? No, let's upgrade Whirlwind. This is huge. Pedro Biagioni, thanks for the Prime sub and the 27 months. Of sub poor. Look at that turn one. Spicy. Hmm.
Is it bash then dropkick? I guess I could do shockwave dropkick. But what I can't do is armaments then shockwave then dropkick. I could just do armaments shockwave, that's fine. It does set us up well for success. We get some good cards upgraded. We apply lots of debuffs. Probably getting bonked next turn if we play the shockwave and not the dropkick. If we want to transform and not get hit, we have to play bash dropkick. But we do have lots of health, so we can just take the hit. Get set up well for the rest of the fight, that's fine. Well, that's so close to being enough damage. Really close. Uh, if I use the Swift Potion, we can stop this hit. I'll do that. I will do that. That seems fine. Oops. Wait, that was not the right card. Finger? Hello? Yeah, that was not right. Hmm. Tabald, thanks for the 23 months of the Prime sub. Definitely meant to play Whirlwind there, not Shockwave. So yes, yeah, so we wasted our potion, unfortunately. My bad. Shouldn't cost me the fight, thankfully. But uh, definitely a bit of a whoopsie there. Oops. My bad. Not quite yet. Soon, though. Soon, corruption. Very soon. Go for the kill. GG, Guardian. All right, we do get a potion back, so I don't feel too, too bad about uh, punting our with potion there, but a little bad. Do we want a double tap, a bludgeon, or a berserk? It actually feels like a half decent bludgeon. I like bludgeon with paper frog. Power slouch, the thank you so much for the prime sub. Do I think any act one boss affects my win rate substantially? I think it depends on the character. Each character has a, a sort of worst matchup. For example, I think Ironclad performs most poorly against the uh, Guardian in Act 1. I think Silent performs most, poor most poorly against the Slime Boss in Act 1. So I'd wager that Slime Boss probably reduces my uh, Silent win rate. Paolini, thanks for the Prime sub in the three months. Right, meanwhile, Watcher against Slime Boss almost feels too free. Oh, King Awesome, thank you so much for the Prime sub. 
Welcome. Uh, thanks for 10 months of support. Call me a simple man, but bludgeon looks really fun here. And would mean Snekawai would be overpowered to find. Berserk might be actually pretty good under the right circumstances here. I like it to pay for the whirlwind. We already have an energy generating card in the corruption, though. I'm going to take the offensive card. These are not Snekawai. We have Pandora's box, though. Only transform six. Runic cube. Whenever we lose health, draw one card or double our potions. Somewhat down to find out what's in the box, although with corruption, having the four defense is not a bad thing. Maybe this is Sacred Bark. Doubling our potions could definitely give us some advantages moving forward. We have pretty good relics so far, so we don't completely hate being down in an energy here. <clears throat> that said, what if it's just cube? Cube for draw. Draw goes with corruption. No, it should probably be cube, actually. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like this runic cube. I like to think of cube as uh, draw more when you're behind. If you start losing health in a fight, you'll get extra draw. And it's bonus incentive for self-damage cards, be it offering or bloodletting or brutality. And yet another David, thanks for the prime sub and the 11 months of support. I'm Cuban. Let's cube it up. And let's get to a shop. I like going to this shop and then to here. We can decide green path if we're feeling good. Or rather, if we're feeling scared. Or red path if we're feeling good and not scared. We can fight maybe two elites here. Any path that fights three elites that's not suicidal? No, there's no path that fights three elites at all. So it's either two elites or the one elite. With 360 gold, let us get to the shop. Post haste. I was kind of hoping for bird nerds first, but this is fine. Do I even bother shockwaving given that I draw them both on the same turn? I don't think so. Do I want to headbutt twin strike? Also, no. Good bonk it, or are we corruption? I want a corruption. Gonna draw six cards for next turn. Helps block a little bit here. I want a potion? I don't think so. Oh no. Well, that was the worst possible draw, really. Yikes. Our potion? Thinking about Power Potion here. But I don't know if it helps enough. Even the cube couldn't save us from the straw. Lenny Pooh, thanks for the prime sub. What are hits on the power pot? Dark Embrace is number one. Solves our problem entirely. Heal No Pain blocks for six. Metallicize blocks for three. I don't believe in Flame gets a kill. Mostly Dark Embrace. Bash Dropkick does not draw a card, unfortunately, because the Spirit Guardian has an artifact, so it does not become vulnerable. This is where that Swift Potion would have been really nice. That's true. Okay, I'll take the Field of Pain. Good enough.
Emokinesis? Nah. Not good enough. Bloodletting, though. That's good enough. Also, Brimstone. Brimstone Runic Cube. I kind of like that. Brimstone says, we gain two strength per turn, but all enemies gain one strength per turn. Puts us in a situation where we automatically scale up. Very, very powerful. Um, but makes our late game kind of spooky. With the Runic Cube, the Corruption already. I'm not that afraid of hearts so far. We've also gotten a lot of strikes removed. Never bought Brimstone. It seems so bad. Well, let me show you why it's not bad. It's actually really, really good. Ludicrously so. I don't think I take seeing red. Choose one of 20 cards to add to my deck. I would love to do that. Dark Embrace or Feel No Pain or Disarm. There's the Feel No Pain. Second Wind's okay. Battle Trance is okay. But it's going to be Feel No Pain here. Is the Burning Elite ever a consideration? Pretty hard to want to do the Burning Elite next, too. Although we are not bad. Let's see how much health we have by the time we get there. As it might not be very much. We're about to take 24 here because of this abysmal turn one draw. So, yeah, very likely that we don't get to do this because we're going to be panicking in a moment here. Is there a way to not give one strength to the opponent? You can disarm them and remove the one strength. Only I could have afforded that energy potion. We were just a little bit shy. This would kill them both. Oh, well. Ow. But my face, though. But then note how by turn two, they're just both dead. And that's the real power of the Brimstone. Rogger Power Through. I'll take the Shrug since we have the Corruption, but any good block card is great with Brimstone here. If I rest, are we okay to take a fight? I think so. Uh, an elite fight, that is. I'm pretty sure. We'd like to take an elite with Brimstone. Uh, haha, although, will it work is the question. Spooky. Gotta go for Bash. With Paper Frog, seems correct. Yikes. Uh, although, I have a kill here, right? We Headbutt Bludgeon. Play Bloodletting. Lose three health, gain two energy, and draw a card from Runic Cube. Then Bludgeon does sixty-one. We heal off the book of uh, off the snake plant with the Brimstone, specifically because the extra strength lets us get the kill earlier. It's pretty good, and that's why Brimstone is better than it seems. Right, the enemies doing more damage is scary, but if you deal more damage, the enemies die faster, and therefore the enemies deal less damage. We take a Sword Boomerang. That card kind of slaps. Although I don't like that it's randomly targeted. I'd usually prefer Heavy Blade. Usually. This is so efficient, though. I'll take one. And we are going to rest going into this Elite. This could be Book of Stabbing with lots of strength, or it could be Gremlin Leader who attacks way too early. Or something similar besides. Oh, nice cleave find. That's right. You take that, and you die. Similarly here, with Grum Leader, we just want to kill this thing as quickly as we can. And the extra strength per turn really makes that much more viable. Get a whirlwind. You got this. And so this elite fight was also quite free. 
Now we get energy every third turn. Could take an Infernal Blade if we wanted to. I'm not going to. And now we can upgrade a card. Bloodletting is a good upgrade. Corruption is a good upgrade. I think I'll do Bloodletting first. Legend's also okay. From here, do we go more event rooms or less event rooms? I think I'd like a couple more combats. Still looking for a Dark Embrace or some such. I'm thinking we go uh, this way. Rather than this way. Would Spooky Ghost be good here? It might be okay. I don't like Spooky Ghost that much with Runic Cube, although being able to take one is pretty good. Hmm. A red Skull. Okay. Extra strength below half health is definitely nice. We don't get attacked for much here. That's good. I'll play, but I don't like it. Wind Strike does 34 damage. That's why the Brimstone is so good. It's way too much damage. Everything becomes die so quickly. Quaint though. Third shockwave. I don't think so. Do I want a body slam? Also, no. True that the combination of brimstone and paper frog is ludicrous amounts of uh, damage output. Heck. Oh no. Uh. Bah. Shoot. Etc. Boo. Although, wait, I can headbutt the corruption. I think I want to headbutt the shrug, though, for this turn. Although I can do both, actually. Even better. Yes. Yes. Headbutt cr shrug? Headbutt cur shrug. You heard me. Try it. The shrug, that is. Headbutt corruption. Shrug. Play the Corruption. Play the Strike. Now we can block. Beautiful. Sentinel is very good with Corruption. Immolate is very good at doing damage. I think I want a Sentinel. Goes really well with Whirlwind, for example. It's not a bad Immolate, though. I do like a Fire Pot. Fire Pot over Dex Pot. Still might be fighting um, Book of Stabbing here. Another transform. I guess we transform our final strike. Still hoping for Dark Embrace. Double tap. Now we can double tap Bludgeon or double tap Boomerang or double tap Dropkick. How toast are we to Heart without a Disarm? I wouldn't say we need a Disarm for Heart. We can also use a Dark Embrace. Or other powerful block engine. There are a few other options for for what we could do here. Uh, let's headbutt the dropkick. That's our best damage here. Could also find max health, do double tap reaper things. True. Very true.
Nice. Not a bad book of stabbing fight at all. Bonk. Bottled lightning, uh, meaning we start each combat with a skill of our choice in the opening hand. Bottled shockwave is okay. Bottled bloodletting is interesting. I think I might prefer a bottled shockwave, actually. Although if I bottle the bloodletting, it's a good headbutt target. Bottle the bloodletting. Because of these headbutts. All right, you gonna give me thwack? Oh, the abandoned temple. All right, let's do it. 21 health to get a book relic here. We're gonna heal 25 from Panagraph, so this is perfectly fine. And there's a couple really good options. We get the Encoridion, giving us a random power. Turn one of each combat, that's very good. It's not Necronomicon, but it is very solid. As far as upgrades for the Collector, I think upgrading Corruption or Feel No Pain or maybe Sword Boomerang is the smart play here. The Book of Enchiladas. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Fan Tomb. What do you call a chicken that haunts people after its death? A poultry geist. That is all. I'll go with the feel no pain upgrade. Hopefully, this is enough health for Collector. I'm pretty sure Collector is quite easy between the Brimstone and the other stuff. Oh, and we get to Armaments Rupture with the Bloodletting here. So two strength every time we play Bloodletting is pretty cool. Let's just put Bloodletting on top for next turn then. Oh, ho, 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 ho. destruction. So we can do 17 times 10 to every target here. Um, or arguably more than that if I shockwave first. Hundred and seventy-four. Now we have even more strength. Such that twin strike deals sixty-six damage. GG. Collector's dead on turn three. That's the power of Brimstone. Like I said, the boss fight, no problem with Brim. Offering is nuts with the Runic Cube and other stuff. Definitely want to accelerate this deck so that we can kill things faster. Although Impervious is a little tempting, it's no offering here. And for our boss relic, still hoping for Sneko Eye, although I would take energy just fine. Pyramid is certainly welcome. We're offered energy. I wouldn't recommend Philosopher's Stone, as that adds even more freaking strength onto enemies. In addition to the Brimstone, so that's really spooky. Could take Calling Bell for three relics, or I could just take Fusion Hammer here and get one energy per turn in exchange for not being able to upgrade cards. I've already got Bloodletting Plus and Feel No Pain Plus. I feel like we're pretty good without any more upgrades, as long as we get one more energy per turn. So we don't need to upgrade Corruption. The way you could think of it is either we have a two-cost Corruption and three energy per turn, or we have a three-cost Corruption and four energy per turn. Just give me the extra energy, right? It's kind of the same either way. Gotta fight that Burning Elite. Not a bad path. We don't get locked out of the shop. That's good. We could even go to a later shop if we wanted to. 
Yeah, not a bad path. Not a bad path. Fighting Donu Decca. Still looking for a disarm or dark embrace or some such. That's a good reason to go to another shop here. Try to find uh, dark embrace. Only there was some way to get Dark Embrace. Life would be a lot easier. Bonk. Bad we can't take the left path. Oh, that's pretty juicy, actually. Not bad. Oh ho, that's a lot of damage. 12 damage four times. Get bops. Rue Grit Plus, here we go. Gain block and exhaust a card. There's also second drop kick. Though I don't need second drop kick. Not where we're going. Fire breathing against the repulsor is kind of nice, but hey, don't attack me. Hello? It's illegal. You're all illegal. Grab a second Feel No Pain. That's going to let us generate lots of block with Corruption down. Now up to plus seven per card that gets exhausted. It's definitely an improvement. Still waiting for Dark Embrace, though. What about Second Wind? Allowing us to exhaust all of the non-attack cards in our hand with block for each one. That's not too bad. Flash of Steel is quite good with the extra strength. Zero cost, deal a ton of damage. What about Apotheosis with Fusion Hammer? That's pretty juicy. Great with the Corruption, too. Ooh, I do like that. Yeah, I do like Apo quite a bit. Clockwork's not bad. That could block the Vulnerable from Heart, which could definitely make the initial turns of the Heart fight a lot safer. I do think I believe in this Apotheosis. Let's do it. Let's do it. Borg. Damage. The damage. Liquid memory is a good potion. Dual wield? I don't think so. It's got no upgrade. Could make copies of Feel No Pain or of our attack cards, although I don't see too many attacks benefiting from dual wield here. There's no Reaper, for example. So I think I skip that. Lose the blessing since we have apotheosis now. Question is, can we deal with triple jawworms? They're pretty spooky. I guess with turn one corruption, things aren't too bad. Brutality is very good with the you as it draws us two more cards per turn.
Don't think so. But why are they not mawworms? Surely that's what they're called. Kill you. Come with the whirlwind one time. Thank you. Alcum provides guaranteed block. That's not too bad. Another true grit, a shrug, or a second wind. I think I want the second wind, as the second wind of all of these can produce the most block for the least amount of hard plays, or the least amount of energy investment. You can also delete unwanted powers. Let's rest now. Might as well, right? Right before the burning elite. Make sure we're at full health for this. This run is still looking a little scary. We don't have an end game heart killing build just yet. Though we're getting there. I think we're really only one or two particularly good cards away from success here. One. Perfect. Bonk. Yeah, we do lots of damage. Lots and lots and lots of damage. Bean fire is pretty good. Works with the feel no pains. Does a lot of damage. Deletes a lot of cards. And Sundial is back. Now wait a second. Now we really need a dark embrace. We're so close. We have dropkick shrug. That's enough, actually. Let's hit another shop then. Lamb Gwyn, thanks for the prime sub in the 12 months. That's right, if we want to use the Sundial, we won't be able to play the Corruption. Though that could be a problem for our future selves. okay, especially with two feel-no-pains. I like the current potions more. Three feel-no-pains, actually. This enemy could give us a curse. I'm going to try not to have a curse added, but... Uh, I may not get a choice with certain draws. Good time to consider a potion, but we have health to spare, so I'm just going to wait a turn. Block six with Orichalcum here. Take a bit of damage, draw some cards. Twelve block per exhausted card. It's beautiful. Who do I like better, future Baylor or past Baylor?
Past Baylor has done well. He set me up for success. Teacher Baylor can suck it. That guy. It's here. Okay. We good. We good, Twitch chat. Dark Embrace is here. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw a card. That's exactly what we wanted. We now have the critical pieces for a sundial loop here. Shrug it off plus dropkick equals victory in the heart fight. That means not playing corruption against heart, potentially. Uh, or we may find other means to win. As a bonus, we get even more card draw during the heart fight thanks to the runic cube, which is quite good. And a glowing tesseract. Let me look at three colorless cards, please. Anything that says card draw is fine by me. Eh, not these. Oh, panic button or secret weapon. I'll take a panic button. Gain 30 block one time, and I'll take a violence for the card draw of the attack cards. Dead branch, no. Could take Chemex. Might just want a card remove. I don't need Dead Branch, though. If we have an a, a infinite or semi-infinite combo, there is no need for Dead Branch. Chemex really slaps with this Whirlwind. Apparently we can Chemex and remove. What about remove and remove, though? Remove again, next act. Dunk uh, Twin Strike or something. Go remove and remove. Now that we have the, the drop kick and the sundial, I don't want to remove Bash. Bash is now an important part of the deck. dead. Hmm. Hmm. Even more. I think I'd better play this corruption. Do I think there would be a fair way to integrate selling something to shops? Yes. Ignore the whole concept of selling. Instead of doing that, when the player gets the thing in the first place, give them an option to skip it and gain money. Which functionally accomplishes the same thing as selling at shops, but breaks most of the abusable moments of it, like selling your starting cards or uh, other shenaniganry. So yeah, the fair way to do it is, say, you can skip the relic for 25 or 50 gold. Yeah, the monster train way, exactly. And yes, if you just added that to uh, Spire As Is, of course the game would get a bit easier. This transient is super dead, by the way. I'm not even trying to kill. We're going to get there. Bye bye. Our pot's pretty good. Our pot over Swift Potion? I think so. I really like the Liquid Memories. Let's do that. We have to recall here. And we get a heal going into the boss fight, thankfully. So we're at 68 going into Donudeka. Not too bad. 
too bad. Ice cream would be good here. Um, can I drop kick fiend fire? I guess I can. Take a bit more damage here. Here we are. Yeah, I'm gonna play that. Loads of draw. We can bash here and then debuff them both. The blocking. The flower on two, I guess, is fine. One boss down. One to go. The bird nerd is a little spooky as they do gain power, or rather, gain strength for every power card we play. That said, we scale without playing powers, which is quite nice. Okay, and I guess I'm just gonna fiend fire all of this. We skip corruption in this fight. Could, but we don't have to. What happens if we kill this boss before the minions? Um, you get to see the minions run away if you can kill both phases before the bird, before the uh, cultists are killed. Grr. Hmm. I guess I'll go for the infinite in this fight. It's fine. Get rid of a bird. We can bludgeon and then fiend fire. Keep the bludgeon. Keep the bludgeon. You've only made me stronger. Cool. Precious close to dead here. Be careful. Uh, we have 50 something, 44 incoming. We would go down to single digit health here, but I think that's fine. So we're going to draw a bunch of cards now. Have to be really careful not to take any more damage, but I, I don't think that'll be a problem. Seventeen by four. Hell, that's scary. Wait, can I block that? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
Let's see, if I shockwave, I gain two energy back for shockwaving, so let's shockwave. That's right, the brimstone is making the awakened one get stronger. Maybe that was a good reason to uh, play the corruption after all. And then we can shrug second wind. One, two, three times eight. I think we're okay here. And true grit headbutt first. Still have bash, right? Yes. Take one again. Actually, take none. Take none is better, surely. Next turn, we can double tap drop kick. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Play a spooky fight, though. Not even close. Well, I might have made a slight mistake there. Second win now. Put up sundial a bit. Okay. We could just do a shrug loop. Just make sure we block this. We good, we good. Now we win next turn, I believe. As long as I don't misclick grievously. Is Sundial balanced? Seems like so many infinites abuse it. Quite a few do. But you can also make an infinite combo without the Sundial. Alright, we even got the relic set up. Toot thump, toot thump, toot thump. Deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this enemy strength gain with brimstone? Never did find disarm, so... Act 4 could be a little spooky here. The good news is we're back to full HP. And we can spend some money at the shop on a remove or maybe a relic here. Back to full. Come on, disarm. Orange pellets. Orange pellets are OP. But those allow us to remove all debuffs from ourselves, potentially frail and vulnerable against heart. Uh, doubly good with a power potion, too. Could take Pommel Strike to simplify our infinites. I don't think we need that. But what about the E buffs? What about him? All right, we get a bonus feel no pain in this fight, and wow! <laughs> Talk about a turn one draw. Holy crap. That's what you want to see. The hand picked set of cards. Let's go feel no pain, dark embrace, corruption, then bloodletting, draw two. Then we can feel no pain, feel no pain. So I feel no pain, 10 in play. We get stabbed by the spear, but guess what? That just draws me more cards with and with a running cube. And now we're off to the races here. All these defends draw more cards. Beamfire draws more cards, even better. Turned around real fast. Now you die.
Calipers would be good here. set that up a bit, actually. Right, double tap. Whoops. Alright, that's fine. That is a-okay. We have full health. Not perfect relic setup, but I think it'll work out. We even get a bonus Dark Embrace from the Encaridion, because this game definitely wants me to win this run. Looks perfect to me. We are basically ideally set up here. As an added bonus, every time we play a card, the heart will deal two damage to us. Wait, why is that a bonus? Well, because we draw a card whenever we take damage. So we can play a card, draw a card. And that feels pretty good. I'm going to Offering. Love to double tap bash here. Let's get the Vuln down quickly. Just drop kick. Okay, keep playing stuff. So we can Liquid Memories Fiend Fire potentially. I think I'm going to headbutt the True Grid here. Okay. Our potion next turn to remove all the debuffs, just in case we don't draw one. 4x15 up front. Spooky. Take another feel no pain. Sounds great. Draw a card. Uh, we're not playing corruption. Is that correct? That's correct. So I can second win this hand? Yes. Yes. I still have to play an attack. There are no attacks. I guess that's what Liquid Memories is for. Yeah, there's, there's straight up no attacks. Um, so yeah, Liquid Memory seems fine. Liquid Memory seems fine. Oh, Infernal Blade. That's right, Infernal Blade makes an attack. True. Although, looks like I'm not going to be able to play the Infernal Blade this turn. Probably. So let's see what Shrug draws. Yeah, so let's Liquid Memories. Boost the energy as well. Alrighty. Looking pretty good here. We just fiend fire now. We have enough Vuln for the rest of the fight. As long as we keep Shrug and Dropkick, we're fine. Uh, we should delete cards we don't want to draw again, though. a lot better.
Now we can go shrug, drop kick. Rug, drop kick. An awfully familiar feeling. <laughs> if you were here for last run, this is uh, basically how we did that run with the sundial. Although that time we had pyramid, now we have a different set of cards. And the brimstone, but we have once again prevailed against the heart. GG. The sundial 1-2. You'll love to see it. Certainly, I love to see the streak at 10. That's for sure. No calipers here. 7 by 15, that'd be spooky if it weren't for the fact that I can block an infinite amount and the fact that I can kill the heart this turn. But yeah, you can see even with the, the weekend, this number gets really big, really fast. GG. GG, Twitch chat. What an amazing run for number 10. Not too bad. Not too bad. GG. We shat. GG. If I hit 20, will I keep going until it breaks? Of course. Yeah, I, I won't uh I won't ditch a run after 20. Definitely see uh, how far we can push it. And yes, this is as far as we have gotten in the challenge so far this year. We had one other 10 streak, I believe, but now this is our second 10 streak, and maybe it keeps on going. Trey, thanks for the five gifted subs. Uh, Dark Nasty with the prime sub. And Dursley, thanks so much for the prime sub in the two months. Our third 10 streak, okay. Chat knows better than I. Feeling any ironclad fatigue? Surprisingly little. I, I kind of thought I would get tired of playing the same character over and over. But uh, ironclad really hasn't been too, too bad. Partially that is limiting us to two runs per day. Doing more than that, I think, would, would burn out faster. But ironclad has been really fun. He's a fun character. Am I doing another Ironclad run? Not today. Spire sleeps and so shall I. No, I think I'd like to switch things up here today. Actually feeling paradoxical. I want to do some puzzle game action. We haven't visited Patrick's Parabox in quite a while, so I'd like to do some of that. We will be back to the Ironclad tomorrow, though. I will do a Saturday Spire stream. So we'll continue this streak tomorrow at our usual start time of noon. Hard to believe we're already at 10 here. Even if we lose, this has been a very good streak. Quite happy with this. So the current plan, Twitch chat, I am going to uh, refill my water and stretch my legs. Takes a few minutes. Maybe grab a quick snack as well. Upon my return, get paradoxical. Be right back, everybody. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 